want to welcome all of His Glory Ministry from east to west to north to south as we bring you a special uh, happy Shabbat from east to west to north to south. Today is the day of uh, Shabbat in the Hebrew, and it's also the day of Pentecost in the church. We're going to explain what the, the meaning and the purpose of Shabbat is in the Hebrew and how it ties to Pentecost in the, in the, uh, the new covenant with the Lord Almighty. The, the, feast, the, the festival of Shabbat is one of the seven Hebrew festivals of the Lord. Shabbat is 50 days from Passover, so it was a very important day. It's, it completes seven Sabbaths. Everything you're going to see is in sevens, because this is showing you the Christ. The Shabbat is pointing to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and we'll show you why in the tradition of the, uh, of, of, of the Hebrew. First of all, Shabbat in Hebrew means the festival of weeks. It means weeks in Hebrew. Pentecost means the 50th, the week as well. That's the day the church was born. And uh, this, you can find this in the Shabbat and the Torah. It's in Leviticus 23, 16 through 27. The Lord tells us what to do. Uh, there, you give seven lambs as an offering. Christ is the, is, is the lamb offering, the, the, the Passover lamb. And you had to complete seven Sabbaths for this to happen. This is the second of the harvest festival. So this would be considered the latter rain, which ties into the Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came down and spread throughout the church. God is using the symbol, these two holidays to go hand in hand. Everything about Shabbat points to Pentecost, and everything in Pentecost and Shabbat point to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and we'll explain more. Um, what they do is they, uh, they read the Torah, an everlasting reading of the Torah all night long, but they really study the book of Ruth in, in, the, in the ancient Hebrew, which is absolutely amazing. And we'll get to that, how that ties into Jesus Christ and Pentecost. Remember, Ruth is a type of, of the church. She's a Gentile bride. She was a Moabite. Boaz is a type of Christ, a kinsman redeemer, a dual covenant. He redeemed the bride, which is the church, the Gentiles and the Jews alike, and he redeemed the land for Naomi. That's the dual covenant of the kinsman redeemer. Also showing God's dual covenant with the nation of Israel and, or through the, the Jewish people and the church, mutually exclusive, but through one Messiah. We as a church know Christ is the head and the Jewish people are looking for Messiah ben David. And many uh, Jewish people are, are realizing and knowing the Messiah as their Lord and Savior as we speak. But the rest of the Jewish faithful are waiting for Messiah ben David because they know he's in the line of David. So, uh, so they read the book, of Lu uh, the book of Ruth. And what's interesting about the Shabbat, again, pointing to Jesus Christ, is that it's a requirement that they give two loaves of bread. So the two loaves of bread represent, two is always a number of, of witness, and the two is a number of a covenant. This is God's covenant to the church and God's covenant to the nation of Israel, mutually exclusive, but through one Messiah, one shepherd's door, as is in Jesus Christ. The other uh, amazing thing about the festival of Shabbat, it's the only festival out of the seven festivals where the Lord says you can have leaven in the bread. So out of the six, uh, uh, the other six festivals, God is telling us strictly, take the leaven out of the bread. Uh, this would be wheat bread because this is the wheat harvest. This is the second harvest. This is, the, this is where uh, Bo, uh, uh, Ruth came up to Boaz in the book of Ruth and where he redeemed her as uh, the bride and he redeemed the land as the kinsman redeemer in the book of Ruth. So you're allowed to only on this festival have leaven in the bread. Why? God in the other six festivals has leaven. Well, we know through expositional constancy, again, through our teaching, that the Holy Spirit is always consistent in its idioms, its symbols, its numbers, everything. So that's why Leviticus 7, showing Shabbat, numbers of seven, Jesus comes back in, as the kinsman redeemer. The book of Revelations is all seven. It's completion. That's why there's seven Sabbaths have to come be completed before, after uh, Passover to Shabbat, which is Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit came out in the church. And I believe that we have a great revival on our hands. The Lord works in his timings and he works in his patterns. There's no coincidence inside God's word. As the rabbi says, coincidence is not a kosher word. So uh, expositional constancy, the reason the Lord said never to have leaven in the bread. Leaven is an idiom or a symbol of sin. God cannot have sin. So he said never to have sin in the loaves. Because if the sin, 
is an idiom of yeast. And what does yeast do? It sends in two ways. Yeast pops up or rises as bread rises to yeast. So that's pride. Satan brought us into this world and sin through pride. And if the pride is unchecked by going to Jehovah God or going through our Savior Jesus Christ, that bread, will, that, that, that leaven, that sin will go through the entire church or go through the entire body of Israel and it will spread. It can't be left unchecked. So Shabbat is the only one to allow you to have leaven in the bread. Why? Because Christ took the sins away once and for all as our lamb. The lamb offering, the seven lambs in Leviticus that it says to give is pointing to the Messiah, the Christ, the lamb of God who took the sins away and the sins do not exist anymore. And he created his church on the Pentecost, meaning the 50th. And we now we, we ride with the Holy Spirit in his kingdom glory. Praise his name. So everything in Shabbat points to the risen Christ. Everything in Shabbat points to the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. As we mentioned, again, Shabbat is the day that they celebrate that uh, Moses got the, the Torah from God on Mount Sinai. So Moses got the word of God from, uh, from, uh, from God himself, the five books of Moses. And five is grace. And we get the we get the literal word grace, who was in the in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. As John says, the word became flesh. That is the word of God. That is Jesus Christ. God doesn't work in anything in coincidence. It's all put together for us to peel it back, line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept. God wants us to know these important festivals, because this was one of the three important festivals. That, G that God is telling us for eternity, we will have to celebrate and go to Jerusalem. It was a requirement to go to Jerusalem on Shabbat. You were required to go there on Passover, as Jesus was the Passover lamb, our first fruit. He also physically uh, fulfilled uh, Shabbat because he is the word of God. He created his church and left the Holy Spirit with us on the day of Pentecost when they spoke in 15 different tongues. And that was Christ fulfilling that. And, the, and so the third one would be this, the, uh, the, feast of or the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, where we will tabernacle with the Lord forever. So those are the, the three requirements representing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we will be doing that for eternity. So everything in the, the festival of Shabbat is extremely important to God. And everything in the festival of Shabbat points to Pentecost, points to Christ, points to his church, points to how much he loves us that he gave us the kinsman redeemer in the book of Ruth. No coincidence that the Jewish faithful are reading out of the book of Ruth. She's a Gentile bride. And that points to the, the, the great grandfather of King David is Boaz and the great grandmother is Ruth. Out of their bloodline came King David and out of the bloodline of King David came our Messiah, Jesus Christ, who is a kinsman redeemer, who will redeem the land for Israel, as God said, it was an everlasting covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever, which is Israel. And he will be uh, reign in the kingdom, a king of kings, Lord of hosts, fulfilling the Davidic covenant forever. So this is a very special time. Happy Shabbat. Happy Pentecost. Because this is the day we rejoice that the word of God is in us and with us. And we don't have to go to a tabernacle anymore. We don't have to go to a temple. Christ meets us in the heart when we accept him. And he gave us the beauty of his church, which is us. It's not a building that we go to. We are the church and our heart is the holy of holies. And Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Spirit want to meet us on Shabbat and Pentecost today in our heart. Happy Shabbat and happy Pentecost. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Bless each and every one of you today and always. God bless you on this very important day. And watch the Spirit of the Lord is about ready to take off to the greatest, greatest revival that the world has ever seen. God bless you.